song says, Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Help me say, into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. None like you. Now declare, our God is greater, say, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is the healer. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Our God. Now everybody clap your hands. Open the eyes, open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, Lord. There's no one like you. Sing, not like you, not like you. Come on, say into the darkness you shine. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, Lord. No one like you. Not like you. Not like you. I'll get bigger with it. Sing, our God is great. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are, God, you are higher than it. Come on, we stand and believe. Our, our God is the Our God is the Awesome in power. Awesome in power. Our God. Sing, our God. Our God. Our God. Our God. welcome you on this evening, this Friday evening, and we welcome you to come in and join us in our Friday night Bible study, and we thank all of you for your presence on tonight, whether you're joining us live stream services by World Wide Web, or YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram, or even Facebook. We will be studying uh, with you on tonight, and uh, uh, we will continue on our, our, our Friday night Bible study uh, from the theme, 
perfect peace in troublous time. We do greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on tonight and in behalf of our Bishop and Pastor Dr. Luther James Blackwell Jr., Ruling Ella George Husbury, and the membership here at San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly Church, we welcome you tonight. Our study services will begin with scripture and prayer, and then we will go into our study on tonight. We would like for you to note for scripture on tonight, coming from Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses, amen, verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, amen, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and search like, after which I tell you before, as I have told you also in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Father, tonight, we just want to thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come to stand before these, your people. Oh, Father, to study from your holy divine word. As we study, you, Lord, and we pursue and go into the study of perfect peace in troublous time and with reference to hostility. Oh, Father, we pray for divine inspiration as you pour out upon these, your people. Amen. That's what you will have them to hear from your word. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that we will be able to glean from your divine words of truth those nuggets, those truths, those inspirations that would add value to our lives, that we may apply it to our lives and make corrections as we go along this life, that we may bring a little life of peace and happiness and joy in these troublous times. Bless everyone that's here. Bless those, O oh Father, that's in our listening audience, O oh Lord, by virtue of live stream, O oh Father, and YouTube and Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and website. Bless them in a mighty way. We want to thank you for this opportunity. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, tonight, amen, our study, we continue our study. Are we be bringing to conclusion, amen, our study of, of perfect peace in troublous time with our emphasis on hostility. Hostility. Our scripture text is taken from, our theme is taken from, the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3, and we will also read verse 4, in addition to Romans 8, 5 through 7. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Romans 5, 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind, or they set their mind on the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the, for the, for the carnal mind is death, but the spiritual mind is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity or hatred against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, Neither indeed can be. So as we go into the study of our lesson on this night, amen, we investigate, amen, the passage of, from the book of Romans. After the flesh implies the sinful nature, do set their thoughts or their mindset on the things that satisfy the flesh. And spe it speaks of the sinful man as being consumed by the power of sin that is demonstrated by self-sufficiency, independence of God. This is an area of activity separated by sin as opposed to the area of the spirit of God. And they do mind the things of the flesh. That expression, do mind the things of the flesh, when used in a negative sense, refer to the thoughts or the purposes of the mind that are central in the sinful nature. 
For example, it speaks of in Galatians 5 and 19 through 21. Now the flesh spirit, now the works of the flesh are manifest, or they are evident. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, or sexual impurity. Amen. Idolatry, which is witchcraft, which is sorcery. Hatred, which is hostility. Variance, contention, emulation, or jealousy. Wrath, strife, which is selfish ambition. Sedition, which is dissension. Heresies. All of these things are the works of the flesh. And all of these, amen, uh, put us at enmity, separated, or uh, alienate us from the presence of God. But it required Jesus Christ, who is our peace, to come and offer his life as a sacrifice for our sin. And through the ministry of re reconciliation, amen, we are reconciled back into a proper, friendly relationship with God our Father. All reconciled human beings were once dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2 and 1 says, And you who, and you who he had quickened, how, how that is made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, we who are reconciled to God shall always recognize what God's power had done in us. Ephesians 2 and 2 said, wherein in time past, we walk or we live from day to day and according to or in harmony with the course of the age of this world, in harmony with the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. In other words, he's saying we live in agreement with the tendencies, thoughts, the pursuits, and the deeds that so characterized this present period in which we live. We lived in harmony with the philosophy, philosophies and the values and the lifestyles of the world system that are opposed to God and reject and are hostile to the Almighty God. We conducted ourselves in accordance to those ungodly values that are laid down, that are poured into the flesh of our mind by the prince of the power of the air, the devil himself. But being before being converted, we live in concurrence with the prince of the power of the air, which means that we used to live by the dictates of Satan. Ephesians 2 and 3 say, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. In other words, we, are, we all, both Jew and Gentile, bond and free, hallelujah, male and female, conducted ourselves as sinners. And we all, whether Jew or Gentile, bond or free, male or female, hallelujah, were subject to divine punishment. But Romans 8 and 6 goes on to clarify, for we were living in carnality of our mind. And if by the carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. To be carnal minded is, the, is to have one's life dominated by the sin nature or the flesh nature, always striving to satisfy the demands of the flesh. But to be spiritual minded is controlled by the Holy Spirit. And so Romans 8 and 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So perfect peace in troublous time is secured in our mind being in the right spiritual, spiritual set that is spiritually minded as controlled by the Holy Spirit. And in this, a mindset, we can live in peace, perfect peace, in troublous time, even in the midst of hostile or hostility and circumstances in which the environment are hostile to us. Romans, I mean, a November the 18th, 2002 research has found that heart attacks, chest pain, and other signs of heart disease occur more frequently among men who are measured as hostile in their activities. So the definition of hostility 
is the state of showing or feeling enmity, antagonism towards someone, not hospitable, pertaining to an enemy or a foe. Some of the synonyms for amen, enmity, amen, is hostility, antagonism, animosity, rancor, antipathy, animus, are all nouns that all refer to the feeling or expression of ill will towards someone. Hostility can refer to clear expressions of ill will in the form of threats or violent action. The other terms, enmity, antagonism, animosity, rancor, antipathy, and animus denote conditions of ill will likely to produce such acts. But antagonism, amen, is mutual resistance, opposition, the principle of being an opposing force or factor of principle. Antagonism makes the strongest implication of active opposition or combat or the eminence about to occur, that is the, something about to occur of that particular antagonism. Animosity and to a greater extent, rancor suggests harboring of hatred and resentment. So it's feeling typically traced to past differences that have produced grievances and desire for revenge. Animosity is defined as bitter hostility, or open enmity, active hatred. Enmity, deep-seated mutual hatred. Both hostility and enmity denotes the ill will of one person or group towards another or more mutual bad feelings existing from one heart to another. Antipathy, amen, is deep-seated aversion that is intense dislike of someone. A repugnance that is feeling of extreme dislike. An animus, amen, is ill will of a Distinctive, personal, and sometimes irrational nature based on one's prejudices or peculiarity of character or temperament. Prejudice is an adverse opinion or judgment formed beforehand or without knowledge or the examination of facts. Rancor is defined as bitter, long-lasting resentment or ill will. Each of these synonyms the virus is a man, various, it defines various degrees of enmity or hatred that can develop in a person's heart. Hostility is being ready for a fight at all times. Hostile people are often stubborn, amen, feel that they're important, hot headed, or even have an attitude. Hostility, enmity, animosity, antipathy, rancor works counter to one's health. Anger and constant hostility keep your blood pressure high and increase the probability of having other health problems such as depression, heart attacks, and strokes. Amen. Enmity is defined as hatred or hostility. Genesis 3 and 15, amen. The Lord put enmity between the devil and the woman, amen, and between her seed and his seed. And he indicated that the devil's seed, amen, will bruise the heel of the woman's seed. But the woman's seed, amen, will crush the head of the devil and his seed. Amen. The Lord placed a spiritual barrier between, amen, the seed of the devil and the seed of the woman. Satan is the enemy of the human race. That is the reason God put enmity or hatred between the Satan's people and the God's people. And the representative of the seed of the woman, that is one that will be made flesh, Jesus Christ himself, would deliver the death blow to Satan, but in so doing would be bruised himself. Satan, amen, shall bruise or crush thy head, but thou shall, hallelujah, bruise his heel. All this refers to Christ's bruising on the cross which led to the eventual crushing of Satan and his kingdom when he died on a cruel cross. Amen. Suffered to death for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Animosity, and to a greater extent, rancor, suggests harboring of hatred and resentment. So it's feeling typically traced to past differences that have produced grievances and desire for revenge. 
in Genesis 4, 1 through 8, it, the record of Adam and Eve, amen, bringing forth their first son and calling his name King, Cain, meaning acquisition. Eve conceived again and gave birth to a son who she named Abel. Cain was a farmer and his brother Abel was a husband. When the two men brought an offering to the Lord, Abel's offering was accepted, but Cain's was not. So Cain murdered Abel, his brother. 1 John 3 and 15 said, Whosoever a man is hated or expresses hostility against his brother is a murderer. If he, even if he obtains or exercises hostility in his heart, the spirit of a murdering is already developing in his heart. And his hostility will find his way out and taking vengeance. And you know that no murderer had eternal life. A murderer is one whose heart is full of hate and even destructive apathy can be found, uh, can be forgiven for a certain sin. Amen. But one who is truly forgiven will no longer remain in this murderous nature. He will not allow a man himself to be entertained by animosity, hostility, or uh, even resentment. Examples of hate, a man was found an expression of various degrees. Amen. Amen. In Genesis 37, 2 through 7, 11, we see where hostility that is not dealt with can increase in degrees. Joseph's personal name meaning adding, as a child of Jacob and Rachel's old age, Joseph became the favorite of his father. Hallelujah. And Jacob gave him a coat of many colors, or a, a richly ornamented robe. And for this, his brothers hated him and was hostile to Jacob, couldn't even look at him straight. This and other, uh, the other, uh, uh, this and the two dreams that he shared with his brothers concerning the sheaves in the field caused his brothers to hate him yet, as the Bible says, even more until it led to the point of envy. And when they began to envy him, Amen. It pushed them to the point of wanting to kill them. But because of intervention of father by one of his older brother, Reuben and, J and Judah, amen, they sold him to the Israelite. Envy, the resentful or painful awareness of another's advantage, joined with the desire to possess the same. Enemy, uh, envy is among the list of the defiling vices that comes out of the heart, according to Mark 7 and 23. It is a characteristic of humanity in rebellion against God. Romans 1 and 29 says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornications, and wickedness, and covetousness, and maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters, a hostility towards God, a despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil, and disobedient to parents, characterize the nature of those who are governed and ordered by control by the flesh, the fleshly nature. Christians are called to avoid envy. Galatians 5 and 26 says, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another to, uh, to envy, provoking, amen, one another and envying one another. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal mind is enmity, is hostility, antagonistic, animosity, amen, rancor, antipathy, animus, are all nouns that refer to the feelings or expression of ill will towards another. The carnal mind denotes the thought or understanding as being of the sensible nature of having possession, and entertaining worldly thoughts. Its translation represents a spiritual consciousness or disposition that can be either positive or negative. When speaking in the flesh of worldly sense, darkness is the result. Ephesians 4 and 18 says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. The blindness of their heart refers to the hardness of their will. Amen. Their obstinacy against the divine will of God has caused them to be separated from God's life. 
and it also caused them to be totally hostile towards God. But God, through Jesus Christ, has offered a remedy to destroy and to abolish, amen, the hostility that exists in the heart of man. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now had he reconciled a man unto himself. So reconciliation is the work of God through faith in Jesus Christ, atonement, that brings hostile men back into a peaceful and a right relationship with him when they exercise faith, saving faith, being converted faith in the, in the works of the Lord Jesus Christ and his reconciliatory work that he rendered for the salvation of the world up on the cross. Is enmity against God? Those who have not been reconciled to the Father through faith in his Son, Jesus Christ, are enemies of God, as well as those who maintain friendship with the world, according to James 4 and 4. Deliverance from hostility, human and supernatural death, comes from the Lord. Psalms 37 and 8 says, Cease from anger and forsake wrath, for fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For it is the mind, amen, the carnal mind is not subject to the laws of God. The carnal thoughts that are governed by sinful nature, human nature, and worldly thoughts, they do not yield, do not obey the law of the Lord. Amen. Paul called the law, the law of sin and death, because it increases our sin and innate tendency to rebel against God. But Jesus perfectly kept the law, and so was sinless in his doing so. His righteousness is imputed to us by faith when we believe. He who knew no sin was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this never can, amen, be possible for the carnal mind, amen, to be obedient to the law of God because it's totally contrary, totally separated, totally alienated from God. But through Jesus Christ our Lord, who reconciled us back into God, he provided the means to abolish hatred and enmity and hostility out of our hearts. That is the thought that are governed by the sin nature, human nature, or world thoughts does not yield or obey to the law of God, neither can be. Romans 8 and 8, therefore they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The verb, amen, please refer to pleasing through service with emphasis on pleasing God. Hate is to feel animosity or to be hostile towards. Proverbs 25 and 17 directs us to seldom set our feet in our neighbor's house. Because too much of you, too much of you setting your feet in his house, he will become hostile towards you. Hate is defined uh, to hate personally, an enemy or foe, according to Old Testament description. But also hate is, this, is translated to detest or to love less, according to New Testament directive. God directs hate against actions and ideals. Malachi 2 and 16 tell us that God hates or detests divorce. Deuteronomy 12 and 31, the Lord God hates or detests the practice of the heathen. Amos 5 and 21, I hate, he says, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell a savior, amen, in your solemn sacred assemblies. In other words, religious activities without absolute or true devotion is repugnant to the Lord God. Godly ordained forms of worship and religious expressions that are lacking, hallelujah, absolute or true devotion becomes only nauseating, amen, empty formalism which anger rather than appease God Almighty. So the Lord hates sins, amen. He mentioned in Proverbs 6, 6 through, amen, 19, he says, it states that there are six things that the Lord God hates. Seven are detestable unto him. A proud look, a lying eye tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides weakened imagination, feet that be swift to running to mischief, amen, a false witness that speak lies, amen, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. 
Amen. These are the seven things that he hates, that he rejects out of the fellowship of the brethren. And so he goes on to say, these are the kind of people that God rejects. Colossians 1 and 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto him, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And so here reconciliation, amen, it stands to, is a term used to describe the work of God through Jesus Christ in removing the hostility, amen, of enmity that is affected by believers' belief in being washed in the blood that Christ shed on, cross, on the cross. The remedy best to use to abolish hostility from the heart is stated in Colossians 3 and 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which you are called in one body and be ye thankful. In other words, we are thou to allow peace because Jesus is our peace. Amen. He is the peace when we are saved and we are in hostile situation. The peace of God serves as a referee, as an umpire to direct us, O oh Lord, the best court, the best godly course to take to resolve the issue in order to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace in that particular body. And so he said, let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which you are called in one body and may you thankful. That once the peace of God rule and accepts that perfect unity, amen, that peaceful situation and restore that harmony between brothers or situation, husband and wives, or brothers and sisters, amen. Then it's time for the word of God to dwell in us richly in the name of Jesus. So if you have not at this particular time and moment of your life made a decision, amen, to surrender your life to Jesus, if you feel that you are in, an, in, in a hostile environment, an environment where hate and envy, antagonism, resentment, ill feeling, amen, is rampant, or even you yourself are feeling resentful, antagonistic, and I feel animosity towards someone. You feel like, amen, you want to get revenge, amen. And turn your hearts over to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. And Jesus said he will come in and he will give you a new heart and a new spirit so that you can walk upright and live holy. And then he will come in and the Holy Spirit will be your guide. He will govern you. He will direct you into the right decision Amen. To render to that person. That decision is always to exemplify love and peace and joy and the Holy Ghost. Amen. At this particular time, we ask you to stand and pray along with us. Amen. If you have not received the Lord and Savior as your personal Savior, pray along with your Father in heaven. I ask you to come into my life and save me. I believe your word when you said you have forgiven all of my iniquity and you have healed all of my disease. You say you have forgiven it for your own sake, and you will remember my sins no more. So, Father, I receive your forgiving spirit, and I believe that the Holy Ghost, amen, when I confessed it with my mouth, and believing in my heart that I shall be saved, that the power of the Holy Ghost would do a miraculous heart transplant, take out this old, sinful, hostile heart, and give me a heart of flesh. He would take out this old, old animosity and antagonism and resentful spirit, and give me a spirit after this Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Father, I believe that and I receive it. And I want to thank you for saving me right now. I want to thank you, Lord, for the new guiding power of the Holy Spirit who will enable me to walk in the newness of life and will teach me all things what I should know and how I should live in this new life as I walk in, the, in faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. And thank you for delivering me. Thank you, Lord, for removing the hostility out of our heart, out of my heart. Well, if I need to pray that prayer along with us, and you believe in your heart, then you are now saved. Amen. We thank you for joining us, joining in with us in this study on today. And we pray that you will have a blessed walk throughout the week to come. And that you will receive the works of Jesus Christ in, in abolishing hostility, enmity, animosity, resentfulness, antagonism, rancor, and all of these other ill vices, even hatred out of your heart. 
Now we will receive our benediction. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of the sheep, through the everlasting blood of the covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We pray that you will have a blessed week. Pray that you will continue to live cautiously as you go from day to day. Amen. Keep your immune system built up. Amen. And try to avoid, amen, contact with those who are exposed to this COVID, amen, Omicron, Stealth, BA2 virus. God bless you.